Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and move forward with the meeting. Um, welcome to our virtual MAP EDU for today, Saturday, January 29th. Um, this is our first meeting of the year, so Happy New Year to everyone. I hope all of your New Year's have been going great. Um, so we'll go ahead and move forward. So just a quick reminder of who your MAP team is. These are the faces. We have Justin Edson, who's actually joining today. We have myself and we have Jessie. Um, she's not here today, but she's here in spirit and really wishes to be here and um, yeah. And then we'll go ahead and do a quick overview of what to expect for this meeting. Um, so we'll jump into the welcome, which is currently, and then we'll go ahead and move forward with neighborhood treasures with Carrie Zasaw. Then we will go to creating a reasonable budget with uh, administrative services, Ray Bowman, um, taking care of our seniors with community services, um, Rebecca Sandoval. And then we'll move forward with benefits of life insurance with the Hartford uh, representative, which is John Tran. And then we'll do some map leader announcements. So um, keep those for the end. If you have any announcements that you wanna make for everybody to know, um, we'll go ahead and open up that time for you. And then we'll do some MAP leader birthdays, wishing all of our leaders um, birth happy birthday. And then we'll do some raffles. Um, you have to be signed on in order to win. And then um, we'll see you next time. Um, but before I move forward with um, the next few things, I want to go ahead and um, give a shout out to our council members and Mayor Tom Adams that are in um that are present today. So we have Becky Shevlin, we have Larry Spicer, and then again, we have Mayor Tom Adams. So go ahead and, and say hi to them. Um, and thank you for joining. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and move forward with um, our police new police officer introduction. Um, for those of you who are new to our meetings, we really like to invite any of our new police officers that have joined Monrovia Police Department, just so you can see all the new faces coming in. So that way, when you see them out in the community, you can give them a nice hello and um, say hi to them. All right, so I'd like to welcome up Officer Nolasco. Good morning, everyone. I'm Officer Nolasco. I got hired by the Monrovia Police Department back in February 2021. I graduated the academy in August and I've been on patrol since then. I, um, I like the city. I really enjoy the city. It's a beautiful city. That is why I joined this particular department. I want to maintain the beautiful, the city as beautiful as it already is and keep the crime out of our city. Um, most of the crime that happens is people that are outsiders, not even residents of the city. Uh, other than that, I wanna help the community. We're in a com community policing era where we try to be proactive rather than reactive, um, educating the public on uh, laws and what's illegal, what's not legal, what's civil law versus criminal law, which seems to be the biggest issue a lot of it is more education rather than enforcement. And what I can provide for the department, um, the same thing that I said in my interview was I can relate to a lot of the Hispanics that live in, in the city. I'm fluent in Spanish, it was my first language. I also speak Portuguese. Um, so far I haven't used it on the job, but it is available. I constantly walk in a dispatch and translate the calls that are coming in. And sometimes I even respond to the same calls just because there's no one on that ship that speaks the language that they are requesting. Other than that, I'm, a, I'm married, I'm a father of one, and I, I really enjoy my job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so those of you who see um, our new officer, go ahead and say hi to him. For those of you who know Portuguese, go ahead and strike up a conversation with him in Portuguese. <laughs> So thank you so much. And we'll go ahead and move forward with our next speaker. We have um, Carrie Zessaw, who's gonna give us an awesome update of our Neighborhood Treasures program. Thank you, Alex. That's a tough person to follow considering that I am not bilingual at all. 
It's a pleasure to be here today to talk about uh, one of my absolute favorite programs. And I know it's one of the favorite programs of the Art and Public Places Committee. Um, and from the Art and Public Places Committee today, we have uh, Mayor Tom Adams, who's the chair. And one of our newest members is the Community Services Commissioner, Edward Belden. So I welcome those two gentlemen here. And if they have any input or anything that they want to uh, share later after the presentation, we would love to hear from them. So today we are celebrating Neighbor Treasures as um, Alex mentioned. Neighbor Treasures is a city of Monrovia art and public places program. But even more than that, it's a program that is the true passion of celebrating uh, those significant Monrovians that haven't been previously celebrated. Um, it educates individuals on the importance of the historical um, contributions of those not previously recognized. And it's a great way to celebrate past, current and future treasures as well. The Neighborhood Treasures program began in 2008 and it truly celebrates the historically and culturally significant Monrovians through the installation of public art. And Monrovia did what Monrovia does best. Um, we heard of this program from other cities um, at a Neighborhood USA conference. And as I mentioned, what Monrovia does best, they took this program and they made it a Monrovia program which no disrespect to other organizations, but Monrovia just does things at a top level. So they took this idea and they said, well, how can we not just make it about Monrovians, but how do we truly make it one of the best programs where it doesn't just celebrate historically significant Monrovians, but we go out to neighborhoods, we educate them, we make it a potential um, art map where people can walk around and learn about this. So right now I'm gonna share with you what makes this program so wonderful. This program is a vital element of the city's art and public places program. And it truly plays a central role in Monrovia's vibrant and culturally rich community. And I don't think um, as many cities, at least in the San Gabriel Valley can say that about themselves. Treasures are identified based on input from local historians and map leaders. And you'll have an opportunity in a few minutes to be able to give some of your suggestions or um, be able to email the map staff and give them some of your ideas. This program would not be as successful without the map leaders. This program is vetted by the map leaders too. And in a few minutes, you'll see the significant that the map leaders play. Um, each piece is designed by an artist who is selected through a competitive process. So the artists have an opportunity to submit their artwork through a call for artist. Then each um, artist that successfully submits their application, we take it to the Art and Public Places Committee and they take their recommendations and they send it to the Monrovia City Council who makes the final approval on not just the budget, but the recipients. Treasures are placed in a specific neighborhood, which is relevant to the identified community members. So as you're gonna see in one of our upcoming slides, the areas that the treasures are placed are significant to them. They may have worked in that neighborhood, they may have lived in that neighborhood, they may have family members, but this truly helped create our art map, which we're excited to share with you too. Some of our current treasures include Lieutenant Colonel Alan Allensworth, Betty May Scott, Kate Wright, the Japanese Monrovians, and of course our recent recipient, which is Leroy Buster Chris. So you're going to see on the left side, these are some of the images of the art pieces that we've already celebrated. Each of the treasures, excuse me, do include different artwork, style, themes, and media. No two are alike, no two are identical, and no two even look very similar to the others. Attached to the art, is a post and that gives a plaque with all the detailed information on the recipient. So if you uh, go by and you visit Lieutenant uh, Colonel Alan Allensworth, which was our first treasure, you're gonna read all about his life and the contributions he made to Monrovia, California and nationwide. Sizes do vary. Um, 
but typically the posts are nine feet tall by three feet wide. So they are substantial in size and color and variations. And so it's really exciting to be able to go see each of the different art pieces. So our treasures, how do we celebrate them? Well, again, that's a Monrovia way. Everybody is welcome to join the treasure celebration. They are part of MAP's uh, famous block parties. They are typically held on Saturdays from 11 to one. And some of the activities include, we do a nice art unveiling where we have the city historian, family members and the artists come and they talk just a few minutes about the significance of the treasures to them and their families. Then we have food, music and fun, which is very typical to the MAP events. That's when everybody gets together. We celebrate uh, the recipients and we just have a very good time. What I wanted to be able to share with you is our upcoming treasures for 2022. The first and second treasure I'm gonna share with you have both not only been vetted by the treasures, but they were actually brought the ideas were brought from the treasure, excuse me, were brought from the map leaders and you guys all voted them unanimously. So who's the first one you voted on? And that is Elmira Romney. And she believed that all children, regardless of their ethnicity, should be treated equally. Over her 17 years at Huntington Elementary School, which was Monrovia segregated school, as a teacher and then as a principal, she fought the school district to draw resources and attention to give her students a good education. Miss Romney was the driving force that transformed Huntington Elementary School from an under-resourced and physically unsafe school to a place where students thrived academically and socially. And she ensured students felt safe and valued. And I know that council member Larry Spicer attended the school when Miss Romney is there, and he is going to be one of our speakers at this event. We are going to hold this event on March 19th, and uh, it's going to be in close proximity to Canyon Early Learning Center because that is the location where Huntington Elementary School used to be. Now our next treasure voted on by MAP was Josephine Anderson, and she was a strong and capable leader who created and built what is one of the most important and significant organizations in Monrovia and the San Gabriel Valley, and that is the Foothill Unity Center. Josephine was in charge of Immaculate Conception Catholic Church food program. And in the late 1970s, she noticed that families just weren't going to her church to get food, that they were going to various churches and didn't just need one-time help, they needed ongoing help. And as such, she called the leaders of various churches and city leaders together. And out of her efforts um, and her desire to help people short and long-term, the Unity Center was born. The MAP staff and city staff are planning that in winter um, later this year. And the event location is to be determined, but I'm sure we're gonna do it in close proximity to the Unity Center. So these are some of the uh, recipient suggestions that we have received that I wanted to briefly share with you. One of which um, that we're looking for uh, 2023 is Stephen Komoria, and he was an advocate for the LGBT plus community. He founded organizations that supported AIDS communication, and he worked closely with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the civil rights movement between now or later um, in the year, if you have any other suggestions that you'd like to make on possible MAP recipients for 2023, you could email myself or you can email the MAP staff. And what we're gonna do is um, in the middle of the year of this year, we're gonna put together possible recipients. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna provide the MAP leaders through the actual survey we're gonna do. We're gonna send them out a little brief bio um, talk a little bit about why they were recommended. And just like we did a couple years ago, we're gonna ask the MAP staff to vote on who they think should be the first, second, or third if we do receive three um, different nominations and your votes are gonna decide who we're gonna celebrate in 2023. So now, how do we celebrate the treasures and all of Monrovia's wonderful public art? Because we do have a wonderful public art program, how do we celebrate and educate 
ourselves on the treasures until we actually have an opportunity to go out there. So something that I know is definitely near and dear to the Art and Public Places Committee, um, and it was brought to us by Council Member Adams many years ago, was that the Art and Public Places staff that we create an Art and Public Places map. So I'd like to share with you right now a little bit about the map and we're just gonna highlight the treasures program as well as some of the map. The map is found on the city of Monrovia Art and Public Places page and you open the map and here it takes you through all the different art categories we have. Monrovia has four signature programs. Those are our ongoing programs. Art on the box, you see our beautifully decorated utility boxes. Everybody loves the Samson Bears. It lists all of our Samson Bears and it lists our footnotes program. And that are the poems that you see stamped in concrete throughout Monrovia on Foothill and in our neighborhoods and on Myrtle. And then of course the neighborhood treasures. I also would be amiss if I didn't note that City of Monrovia also has a large uh, collection of projects. Projects are one-time art and I wanna show you just a few of those. But why don't we start with neighborhood treasures today because that's what we're celebrating. As you can see, everything's categorized by the programs and the projects. So first let's look at Alan Allensworth. We open up, you click on his name very easily, you hover over the image and you open the image. And here you could see a beautiful rendition of the bronze um, portrait of Lieutenant Colonel Alan Allensworth. You read the story about his significance. And then you could just take a few moments to find out a little bit more information. The art map does include the description of the art, the artist and the exact location. And then also for Alan Allensworth, there is a link below that takes you through a little bit more information, how we celebrated him, a little bit more historical data and a little bit more images um, from the event. So allow me to highlight one other one. And as I mentioned, this was our recent celebration and this was Leroy Buster Chris. So similar to Alan Allensworth, we open the image and you can see the beautiful image between Alan Allensworth and Leroy Chris. If you look at it, not only are their stories different but their art is different as well. Once was bronze, bronze and this one is um, resin which is covered in um, polyurethane and so each one tells a story with the image and just the visuals and since uh, the city of Monrovia is very excited about uh, sharing this map I just want to go through one other um, image in each category if you don't mind so now we have art on the box so art on the box as I mentioned are beautifully painted utility boxes and what I'm very excited to say is city of Monrovia was one of the first, if not the first city in the San Gabriel Valley that started the Art on the Box projects. And since then other cities have called us um, and asked us for program information just so that they could form their own program. I know the city of Arcadia uh, recently started creating their program and they sought out the city of Monrovia to find out what makes Monrovia programs so successful. So here under that category, you can see all of our art in the box are listed. So let's choose the lemons. This is one of our original box and it's placed on Myrtle Avenue. And here you can see the beautiful picture um, of the lemons um, on Myrtle. And then you'll see the location of it, which is on Myrtle and Lemon Avenue and the artist. The Neighborhood Treasures program does have a little bit more um, information which is listed on the Art and Public Places because there's so much more to that program. Moving down, I would just like to highlight one of our Samson Bears. So you can see it, we go to more. And what I wanted to highlight today was the Rotary Bear the Rotary Bear is one of our newest Samson Bears, and that is located in Rotary Park, of course. So here's the image, and you can see it's placed right next to the bear. And that bear, I think like all the other bears, really bring 
a great attention, not just to Monrovia's official, or I guess unofficial mascot, um, but wherever it's placed, it brings attention to it. So Rotary Park is a smaller but beautiful park, but just the Samson Bear brings really a lot of attention to it. And people will stop and look and, and not just with the treasures, but definitely with Samson's, you can see people stop in front of those two uh, public art programs and they take pictures in front of them. And I was driving by Rotary Park two weeks ago and two people were taking a picture in front of the bear. So I think that's another great way to celebrate our art is when you see people stop and, and, and wanna celebrate the different art pieces. So as I mentioned, projects are single art pieces that um, tell stories in of themselves. So the first one is actually one of Monrovia's first public art programs. And that's our famous bronze Mark Twain in Library Park, which is taking just a few seconds to load. It must just be because the pictures are, are, are very detailed. So for this one, you can see that we have different images. We have five images of Mark Twain. And this is another um, art piece where you can often find people taking pictures. The last um, program that I do wanna highlight is footnotes, as I mentioned. Those are the poems that we have through our sidewalk poetry contest. And the winners have their poems created into stamped art piece. And those are stamped in Monrovia at various locations whenever the city of Monrovia or one of the contractors is putting new concrete in. So with footnotes, we do list the information, but we don't necessarily show an image of it. So this is one of our moments to talk about historical data in Monrovia, and it talks about the first lots in Monrovia. So we have programs and we have historical data. And through footnotes, every year we do offer a contest. We typically have six to eight poems that are chosen this year, but this year, um, one um, of our uh, community uh, development commissioner, Sergio Jimenez, he actually submitted Brad Oak's old school alma mater. And though that's not necessarily a poem, the committee chose that and that will be stamped um, very close to Brad Oak's um, in the next couple of weeks or so. I haven't even had a chance to share that with commissioner Sergio Jimenez. So that just talks about the difference in Monrovia's art the excitement of it and how definitely neighborhood treasures plays a part in that program. So we're, we're very excited about that. So now we're going to exit this and just go over a few other little brief things. So let me go ahead and exit. Yes, right here. Thank you. Got to leave it to the young ones to help us seniors <laughs> figure out technology. And then you can just click the screen. Okay. So I just wanted to end um, on behalf of the community development department, the staff that work on art and public places, and the art and public places committee individuals, which I uh, was able to introduce earlier. Thank you for supporting neighborhood treasures. Um, as I was, hope I was able to highlight earlier, Neighbor Treasures is a very unique and special program, but it takes the map leaders passion and desire to give us ideas, to help us vote on it, to help us celebrate it and to help us move forward. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And if you have any questions, contact the map staff, they can give you my information. But let's continue to celebrate the neighborhood treasures and the City of Monrovia Art and Public Places program. And have a wonderful weekend, my friends. Thank you, Carrie. Amazing job, Carrie. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and take off this mask so you guys can hear me. Um, thank you again, Carrie, for coming and sharing some information about our neighborhood treasures program. As she mentioned, it really is important and really is up to our map leaders to really have ideas and share them with us. So our door is always open. Um, I will go ahead and move forward with our next speaker. We have our Deputy Administrative Services Director, Ray Bowman. Good 
Good morning, everybody. And thanks so much for that lovely introduction, Ms. Alex. And that was a great presentation, Ms. Gary. Thank that you. That was awesome. Thank you. I learned so much. Um, so thanks so much for giving me a chance to join today's meeting. As Alex has mentioned, my name is Ray Bowman. I'm the Deputy Administrative Services Director for the City of Monrovia. And just a little bit about me, I am a Monrovia local. I graduated from Monrovia High, go Wildcats. <laughs> um, and I uh, studied at UCSV um, and eventually got my accounting degree, became a CPA and have over 10 years of experience in the field of accounting and finance from commercial real estate to advertising to now local governments, which I find to be the most fulfilling for me, but uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, so today we're shifting gears just a little from our beautiful map, uh, neighborhood treasures and projects in the city to kind of, uh, I don't know if it's one of the most riveting topics. Usually when we talk about money and budget and finances, people tend to squirm a little bit in their seats, but hopefully today I get, I dispel some of those scaries away. <laughs> um, so, um, first of all, Happy New Year. Uh, as Alex has mentioned, this is the first meeting of the new year. So I'd like to greet everybody with a Happy New Year and hope everybody's off to a great start. Um, so with a new year comes a lot of different resolutions. I don't know if people have some fitness resolutions, some um, maybe career goals that they have set forth, or maybe some personal development goals, some travel goals. Um, and some of you might have some financial goals. So to help kickstart off to a great year, let's talk about budgets. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, we're talking about budgets today. Um, and I'd like to start us off with this quote. Um, I mentioned earlier that sometimes when we talk about money or budgets, it can be an intimidating topic, but to me, Budgeting isn't about limiting yourself or having these great big restrictions or do or do not list, but it's really about making the things that excite you possible. A lot of us have, as I mentioned, different goals, financial goals, whether it be a vacation you want to go to, a new location, a travel site, setting up a college fund, a savings fund, an emergency fund, retiring early maybe. Mm -hmm. um, whatever those goals may be, we just have to think about what gets us excited and think about those goals and get into that mindset when we're building a budget. Then it becomes exciting. So what are we going to go over today? We're going over a few basic topics about what a budget is, how we do the budget here in the city, how maybe you can set a personal budget, and maybe what are some tips. So let's start off with what is a budget. So a budget is simply a plan. It's a plan for the monies coming into your household and the monies coming out. That's basically what it is. It doesn't have to be daunting or scary or complicated. It's simply a roadmap to your financial goals. Similarly to how you might use Google Maps uh, to know which turns to take and what route to make, a budget simply tells you what spending plan you can have to get to your financial goals. You plot out a starting point and you plot out a destination destination and it tells you how to get there along the way. So uh, on a kind of stepping back on a more global scale, I would be remiss if I didn't discuss a little bit about the city's budget. That is part of my function as deputy director for the city. And of course, this is MAP after all, and you're all great and wonderful community leaders. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of context about how the city does our budgets and hopefully um, relate that to how you might personally create your own budget. So the city operates a biennial budget process meaning we set a budget two years out. And then of course we do annual reassessments and quarterly adjustments to council when necessary. Um, and the city operates on a fiscal year basis. So meaning we run from July 1st to June 30th, kind of different from a calendar year, which a lot of people operate from. And the budget process, as with anything in life and as with personal budgeting as well, it's always dynamic, but it covers the same basic steps, which is, of course, number one, get into that mindset. Similarly to how we started this presentation, we start thinking about our priorities, the things that get us excited to build this financial goal. Of course, for the city, we have a lot of operating departments. We have MAP, we have neighborhood treasures, we have community development, we have public safety. As we welcomed Officer Nolasco, we have fire, we have public works. There's 
library, recreation, a lot of different programming that happens in the city. And during the biennial budget process, we talk to each of the departments, each of our operating departments, to discuss their programs, their various staffing needs, and any changes in the needs of the community that they foresee. Another thing that we talk to them about are some variable expenses, some seasonal costs that may not happen every month, and of course, all the different programs that we have in the city. We all know that, you know, it takes more water to, you know, it takes more water in the summer and takes more heat in the winter, so there's those variable expenses that we take into account. And of course, we also talk about setting aside monies for rainy days. We know that emergencies happen and our community, our wonderful Monrovia community has been hit, not just with the pandemic or civil unrest, but we've also had the Bobcat fire and more recently the rainstorm and the wind event and hopefully everybody's hanging in there and everybody's got their power back. But as we all know, those emergencies do happen and another part of the budgeting concept for our city is to make sure that we have enough money in our rainy day funds. After aggregating, analyzing all of that information, uh, we do have study sessions with council uh, to eventually adopt a budget in June. And at the most recent quarterly update, we have some really good news. We're estimating a general fund surplus, which is amazing, even given everything that the city's been hit with and all those unforeseen circumstances. A lot of that can be attributed to really strong property taxes. Of course, property values are going up. Sales taxes, surprisingly, even through the pandemic, was really, really great. They went gangbusters, predominantly because of the autos and transportation industry. We all know how expensive it is to buy cars right now. Um, and kind of thankfully, it worked in our favor in this case. Um, couple that, of course, with a conservative spending plan that council has approved and encouraged our city to take. The city is looking to be in a really great spot thanks to their direction. So awesome. <laughs> um, so those are really great news. And that's a 30,000 foot level of how the city does our budget. Again, we operate on a biennial budget process with annual reassessments and quarterly adjustments. We're actually coming up to our next quarterly update, a mid-year update coming up this month. Um, and that's taking it from the city level. I want to take it back down to a more personal level because I think the same budgeting concepts do apply. Let's go to the next slide. This is, um, I guess, taking a step back, just a quick snapshot of our biennial budget as it was approved in June of 2021. Uh, here you'll see kind of the proposed budget. These are uh, based off of our unaudited actuals for 2021. We are presenting the annual comprehensive financial report here pretty shortly with our audited financials to council, um, I believe this month as well. So lots of financial data coming out of uh, administrative services in the month month of, oh, actually February, February, sorry about that. <laughs> this essentially just shows, this slide just quickly shows you a quick snapshot of the big revenue ticket items that the city has, which of course are property taxes, sales taxes, like I mentioned, charges for services, and our TOT tax, our uh, tra uh, transient occupancy tax, also known as the bedroom hotel tax. Um, some of the major expenditures that we have in the city are our personnel costs, of course, public safety costs, fire and PD, and of course the maintenance and operations of our programs. So that's a very 30,000 foot level uh, budget that you'll see. You'll have your revenues, your expenditures, some set aside and some surplus. And how can we apply those same uh, budgeting financial concepts on a more personal level? Because I do think that what works for a large scale can be scaled down to a more personal level. So let's take a look at a few key steps to starting your budget. So like I mentioned earlier, starting your budget uh, begins with your mindset. I know it can be daunting to talk about finances and it can be overwhelming given all the transactions that go in and out of your household. But fear not, take a deep breath. Think of some personal goals. Maybe it's a vacation, a retirement, early retirement. Maybe it's saving up for a child's college fund or a rainy day reserve and get, get into that mindset, a go-getter mindset and let's get to it. Of course, the second step is to not just get into the mindset, but to actually take on these actionable steps, which is to gather our resources, gather all relevant information and documents such as your bank statements, copy of your pay stubs, 
login information to your utility bill accounts because everything is paperless now, uh, your credit card bills, your mortgage or your rent statements. And I would recommend going at least three months back to see some of those costs and to get a better picture of what your monthly costs are going to be like or what they have been like. Um, and then of course, step three, let's take a look at how much money um, the household brings in. Let's calculate your income. Think about every source of income that you have, such as of course your employment, any investment income, any property income, any businesses, essentially any dollar that you see coming into your bank account. Um, I would recommend accounting for those. Step four, of course, is to list out our monthly expenses. We took a look at how much money was coming in. What are the monies that typically comes out? So I would recommend thinking about your mortgage, maybe your rent, your car payments, insurance payments. Of course, everybody's got to eat. So your groceries, those Trader Joe's trips, you know, mm -hmm. um, your utility bills, uh, personal care products. Everybody's got a shampoo and soap, um, medical expenses, prescription medication, child care, maybe even and some savings that you typically set aside and some student loan payments. I would recommend thinking about those. And then of course, let's talk about some variable expenses because we all know that not every month is the same as the last. Think about birthdays, maybe the holidays. We know sometimes Christmas gifts can add up. Maybe milestones and upcoming retirement and upcoming wedding, things like that can really take a toll on your budget and they don't happen all the time. So I'd recommend thinking maybe six months out and thinking what are those milestone events or maybe celebrations that are coming up that you'd like to integrate into your budget. Of course, I always recommend to expect the unexpected. Uh, none of us have a crystal ball, but we all know that emergencies happen, whether it's a car breaking down or somebody getting sick or a business closing and a family member losing a job. Um, you know, we all hit those tough times and it's important to have a little bit of a buffer or an emergency or a surprise fund. Um, it's really kind of one of those things that not just puts you um, in a better financial position, but also a little bit of, uh, provides a little bit of peace of mind. Of course, step seven, we've looked at your revenues coming in or your income coming in. We've taken a look at all the possible expenses that your household might incur. And we'll combine that and of course, compare our income to our expenses. It's, it can be daunting once you start listing out all your expenses and you can use an app for this. You can even use a spreadsheet or you can use pen and paper, whatever the method. The main goal is to compare how much money you have coming in to how much expenses are coming out and really taking a realistic and honest perspective um, and being a little tough on yourself. A little tough love is good. It's still self-love um, and compare that income to your expenses. If your income is higher than your expenses, you're off to a great start. That's a great position to be in. And if it happens to be the other way around and your expenses are higher than your income, that's okay because we've taken the first step. We've started to take a look at it. So what we can do is make some modifications to your variable expenses. That's the first step because those we can kind of start tweaking and doing away with some of those things and maybe trying to find some savings in your fixed expenses if possible. Um, of course, uh, not only do we have to gather all that information, put it together, um, but there are a few other concepts I wanted to share to make sure that you're on your way to successful budgeting. I would always recommend making a new budget before the month begins. Um, for the city, I mentioned a biannual budget process with annual reassessments and quarterly updates. We do that because we always look ahead, we always reassess as we go through the year. Similar to a personal budget, I would recommend doing it before the month begins or doing it before the period begins, maybe you do it quarterly. Because similarly to Google Maps, you map your location and your destination before you start driving. So always make your budget before the period begins. I would recommend creating a schedule if you have a day that's dedicated to handling your bills, to uh, making your online payments. I would recommend updating your budget at that point in time. And always be careful about those automated payments, namely those subscription payments like Hulu and Netflix, Spotify, they can quickly add up. So make a, make a point to, to track those expenses because it's easy to forget about those. And of course, to track your progress. As a reminder, it's always important to leave a buffer and to not forget about that set aside for emergencies. 
So we talked about some of those major steps, right? Getting into the mindset, looking at your income, looking at your fixed expenses, your variable expenses, and your emergency fund. Um, but there are some concepts occasionally being thrown around too that might be important to put in our back pocket, um, maybe to apply in your own personal budgeting or maybe to throw out during a dinner conversation. Um, so one of those concepts is zero-based budgeting. Uh, this budgeting, you'll probably hear this kind of going around, is a budgeting method that essentially allocates all of the money coming in to expenses, savings, and debt repayments so that at the end of the month, you have zero dollars left to allocate. It sounds not good, but it is. <laughs> if you have extra money at the end of the month, I would recommend allocating it to either additional rainy day funds, setting aside some emergency monies, maybe paying off an extra credit card bill or an extra car payment, so that at the end of the, the month, you have every dollar accounted for. Now, zero-based budgeting, also called, it could be a balanced budget, as also what we call it, um, works in a lot of different cases because again, you get to account for every dollar coming in and out of your household, but it might not work for everybody, especially those folks who may have variable income, income that's not fixed every month, maybe it's commission-based or hourly-based, and maybe folks who have a lot of variable expenses. So just one thing to keep in mind. It's a cool concept. It works um, for a lot of folks, but maybe not everybody. Another one that you've probably heard that's pretty popular nowadays, um, hopefully you've seen this method before, it's the 50-30-20 budgeting rule, which essentially says that 50% of your net income, so of course that's your paycheck, minus any of your taxes and any medical insurance bills or anything like that, any of those auto deductions, 50% of that goes to your essentials. And your essentials, of course, means your housing, your food, Transportation costs, basic utilities, no Netflix is not basic, uh, your insurance costs, minimum loan payments, childcare, things like that. 30% can go to your wants, and your wants could be, of course, those monthly subscriptions, travel, entertainment, eating out, things like that. And 20% can go to savings and debt repayment. So you could start an emergency fund, you could save for a retirement fund, maybe start an IRA, an IRA, or a 401 if that's offered. Um, um, or you can pay off additional debt. And of course, I always recommend paying off your debt with the highest interest rate. So it's a, another handy dandy tool if you'd like to use it. Um, not everybody fits, of course, one mold. There's no one size fits all when it comes to budgeting, but it's a pretty broad concept that maybe can work for your personal finances. Again, budgeting can be simple. I, I definitely encourage everybody to take a look at their finances. It's one thing, again, that can be daunting and scary and intimidating, but there are so many different resources out there and so many people you can ask questions to, so many different apps you can even download to help keep track of your monthly finances. Again, monitor your budget. Choosing a method doesn't have to be complicated or intimidating. You can even use the good old-fashioned envelope system System. Set aside some envelopes, label it for what you're trying to save for, and go ahead and grab that cash. And every time you get a paycheck, you know, set aside some cash in those envelopes. I've heard that works really well for some people. Just be careful where you put those envelopes. <laughs> um, Again, um, budgeting doesn't have to be intimidating, but one concept I do want to share is that you don't have to be good to start. You just have to start to be good. Everybody mm -hmm. starts from somewhere, from a starting point, and it doesn't mean that you're a budgeting pro to begin with. I was not, um, but through trial and error, you can find a budgeting method that really works for you. And it's just one aspect of our lives that we can kind of reel in and gain control. And one of those really great goals to start as we head into 2022. Uh, as a quick recap, we covered kind of a lot of different steps today. A budget is a financial plan, a roadmap to a financial destination, whether you're budgeting for a city with 38,000 people and lots of different programs, or for your personal household, the approach is similar. We take a close look at our income and our expenses, account for emergencies, variable expenses, we stay accountable and we track our progress. And no matter what method you choose, the most important thing is to start. Of course, again, there are plenty of resources that help jumpstart your budget and road to financial wellness. So don't get discouraged and please don't ever hesitate to ask. 
questions are always welcome. Um, and of course, I like this little anecdotal kind of saying here, they call it a budget, so don't budge from it. <laughs> it's just kind of one of those things that I'm like, hey, you know, <laughs> it's kind of catchy. And it's true. Occasionally, totally understandable. But we set a budget, we stick to it. Um, and with that, I just want to say thank you so much for having me join the group today. Uh, the MAP community is such a wealth of resource and information um, and just a great way to stay in touch with what's going on with the community. Um, I am absolutely honored to be the Deputy Director for Administrative Services Department, serving our great community and our wonderful mayor and council members. Um, and if you guys have any questions, whether it be about the city's budget or even any personal budgeting questions, maybe some spreadsheets or templates that maybe you'd like me to point you to or some apps that you'd like to use, please feel free to reach out. My contact information is up here. I'm at City Hall and my direct phone line is on the screen as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for giving me the chance to talk to your group. And with that, I'll open it up for any questions. You just got one. Oh, awesome. Okay, so our first question is from Mr. Edward Belden. And the question is, does that include Measure K? Uh, no, so Measure K sits, that's a great question um, and very timely because our next council meeting on Tuesday, um, our city manager is actually going to give a Measure K update. So stay tuned to that. I'd like to invite everybody to, um, to participate in that meeting. Um, it does not, Measure K sits in its own special fund. Um, and even though Measure K is a general purpose revenue source, we account for it in its own fund. Um, and it has a separate spending plan that council is going to establish. Great question. Um, there's another one. Oh, okay, perfect. Any, any other questions? Thanks so much for your participation. Thanks for letting me be here. And again, if you have any questions, my name is Ray Bowman, uh, Administrative Services Department. Thanks and have a great weekend. And I will pass it back to Ms. Alex. I just said amazing as usual. Ray really knows how to um, make budgeting and numbers sound so lively and fun. And that's a gift in itself. So thank you so much, Ray. We really are happy to have you join for our meeting. <laughs> So uh, with that, I will go ahead and move forward to our next speaker, which is our recreation manager, Rebecca Sandoval, and she's going to be talking about um, resources for our seniors. So Rebecca, we'll go ahead and give it to you. Um, thank you, Alex. Um, happy to be here as well. I'm just going to just share my screen because I have a um, presentation. Okay. Perfect. All righty. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Alex, for that intro. Um, I have some big shoes to fill. Those are great presentations. I've learned so much. Um, a little bit about myself, as Alex mentioned, I'm the recreation manager for the community services department, the recreation division. Um, I am honored to serve with 35 other amazing um, recreation professionals that just live, breathe, and eat recreation. Um, we um, are um, hungry to always do more for the community. All of our programs are housed out of this little cozy um, facility. This is the community center, if you don't know. Um, we always say um, this is where Monrovia magic happens um, because um, it's just an amazing facility, an amazing place to be. I started my career here in Monrovia 14 years ago um, as a part-time employee. I started as a recreation leader um, and 14 years later, um, I'm the recreation manager, so I'm just humbled and honored to serve the community. Um, I have three young children, so if you hear the chaos in the background, I apologize in advance. Um, you might hear some knocking and some mom calling, but they're they're in the background running and in the back. So 
Um, I am going to just dive into what we offer at the community center and then just go into more detail um, of our senior program. So at the community center, as I mentioned, we have a team of staff that are dedicated and offering a grip of programs to the community. So um, we have a facility rentals. So we um, rent the community center for meetings, for special events, um, any type of occasion. We also rent the historical museum and courtyard, which is a beautiful outdoor location. If you have not been there, you need to see it. Um, we also rent the Monrovia um, uh, Mary Wilcox Youth Center over in Recreation Park, the community room at the library, and all of our urban parks are available for rent. So uh, we offer a huge rent, uh, facility rental program and that staff stays busy 24 seven because we are always looking to use our space at this facility. We also offer contract classes for both youth and adults. So you could um, find any um, exercise classes, yoga, soccer, um, tennis, um, any type of class that you're looking to get out, um, you could check out our website for that. We also um, uh, have a, a a variety of youth programs. So we have our youth commission program, which is our uh, volunteer based um, program for our teens. We also offer our yes intern program in the summer, which we're gearing up for now. Um, we have our sunshine company, which is our inclusive recreation program that we hold at the Community Center Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we do plan our citywide special events, so we're proud to host over 30 special events a year, um, everything from Monrovia Days to 4th of July um, to our spring egg hunt, which is coming up in April. So during the pandemic, we're all going stir crazy not being able to gather and create these events, but we were able to come up with other unique activities to still stay engaged and keep our community connected. We um, also manage all the filming permits in the city. So that comes out of the community center. Um, our, our staff also um, helps uh, to produce the Monrovia Today publication, which is our uh, quarterly newsletter that gets mailed out to all of our residents. It's a citywide document that is kind of just uh, the whole um, quarterly information for all of our departments. So everybody helps put that on together. We're also an acceptance facility for passports. So we have about 10 certified agents that are able to process um, passports. So that is um, a very busy office. Uh, we, we process over, I'd say 500 new passports annually. Um, that might be low, um, but we, um, we love to, you know, just get those new travelers in, get their passports, and then be a part of their, their unique experience when they get to travel, they get to say they got their passport here at the community center. Um, our park naturalists and our Hillside Wilderness Preserve Supervisor also are housed out of the community center um, with the rain event. Um, the Canyon Park is currently closed. So we have all of our park naturalists um, and um, our supervisor uh, working out of the community center. So um, that's fun to have them there. And then lastly, our senior program. Um, so we offer uh, programs to our seniors and our active adults. Um, and the programs that are offered, I'll go into more, but we offer um, senior clubs that meet weekly. We have trips and excursions, a, a lot of different activities and presentations that serve the adult and senior populations. And really our objective into all of this programming is to create a variety of passive and active recreation um, experience for the seniors um, to promote human connectivity. So really our goal is to get them connected, get them out, get them talking to one another, um, creating relationships. Um, and then we hope that the activities improve their quality of life through various life stages. Um, one of the programs um, for our senior clubs, um, we have two clubs that um, call the community center their home. They meet in our large banquet hall, which is our K Dalton room. Um, they meet on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. The Tuesday club is our New Horizon club, um, and they meet typically around nine o'clock. They start arriving um, for their social hour. So this is a time where they um, have treats, they have coffee, they're able to communicate with one another. 
talk with the staff, kind of get, um, you know, just situated. And they they actually have meetings. So they they run a um, they run a meeting and they have a board for each of the clubs and um, they conduct their business. Um, typically, the clubs will. Um, assign their own speakers so they reach out to our city council our other department directors to come out and have them speak to the seniors and typically that starts around 10 30. and just recently i'd say about two years ago we started our senior nutri nutrition program um, so we contract with um, Levin oaks um, and they offer they, they cook all of our meals Staff will go over and pick up the, the meals for the day, bring it over, and that typically is around 1130. This program um, is supported by the city council. Um, it's a free program. We're able to offer it for free. However, we do um, suggest a $2 donation, and you'll see that kind of consistently throughout other community centers. That just goes back into senior programs, um, you know, for the year, but the seniors, you know, don't have the $2, they're not turned away. We, we offer it as a free program. Um, and then the pretty much is the same thing for Wednesday, um, but they are called the gadabouts. Um, some of the seniors are different. They only come Wednesdays. Some of the seniors attend both. Um, but the, um, it's pretty much the same setup for that. They meet on Wednesday for their social hour. Their club meeting starts a little earlier. They start around 10, um, but they conduct their business. They open the meeting. Um, and then they also have the nutrition program starts around the same time. We also have the Monrovia Makers. Um, now, currently, the Monrovia Makers um, are not meeting um, yet. They have not decided to come back, but that's okay. We still have a home for them. Um, but this group, uh, they uh, typically would meet on a weekly basis on Wednesdays, um, and they they just you know meet, um, socialize, they knit and crochet. Um, all levels of crocheters and knitters are invited. If you don't even know how, they love to teach new people. I still am working on my beanie that I, um, I tried for like two years to finish, but they still do not judge me and they still con continue to teach me. Um, so we're hoping that they decide to come back soon. Um, but really what they do is they just knit. They donate a lot of their, um, their handmade scarves, um, these are hand warmers. Um, they donate to the Foothill Unity Center. They donate to charities. Um, and then they also hold um, quarterly boutiques. Um, so during our special events, they have like little tables where they'll sell their, um, their uh, handmade items. And then they put it back into supplies for their group or they'll make a donation to other organizations. Uh, we also host uh, sit, uh, special monthly events. Um, so these events <clears throat> are um, just themed parties that we like to hold. Um, typically, they'll um, come with um, lunch and bingo. This, our seniors love to play bingo, so that is how we get them to come. Um, but typically, they have a theme, so they'll it'll be a Halloween or it'll be a luau. Um, we really try to keep it fun. We'll have music. Um, and we'll have entertainment. Uh, so we have um, the theme parties, as I mentioned. We also, in addition, have a lunch and learn program. So this program is where we'll um, have a speaker come out that will speak to the seniors on something um, educational, something to keep them active, um, and then they'll have lunch after that. We also annually recognize an older American of the year, which is our volunteer of the year. So that's coming up in May. So every year we do a special recognition and a luncheon for them. We have an annual tea party, which is typically held in May. We do a picnic in the park. Um, we have movie days. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we um, try to have our events with live entertainment. So um, keeping them pretty active and busy. So um, our senior trips and excursions is something else that we um, really um, love to plan and, and have. Um, these right now were typically suspended. Our bus company um, was not functioning, um, but we just got word that they are starting to run again. So we're excited to offer our trips and excursions back in the spring. Um, so uh, we go anywhere from Dodger Stadium, as you could see, to museums, botanical gardens, the beach. Um, sometimes we'll even just do a shopping trip during the holidays. 
um, just to get them, you know, to those deals and the outlets that sometimes they can't go out by themselves. So love to go on those trips with them. And then some of our classes that we have for our seniors. So um, in addition to all of the other programs and events, we also try to run um, classes. So uh, we hold um, every other month um, an ARP, which is a smart driving course. Um, so we, we partner with ARP and our instructor comes out. Luckily, it's our very own Katie Gunderson. So we're lucky to have her come out and instruct those. Um, every Friday, we have a senior stretch class. Um, it's held at nine o'clock at the Kate, in the Kate Alton Room at the Community Center. Um, it's a $2 um, to attend. It's just a drop-in program. Um, and then we, following that, there's a walking club. So after the stretch, the same seniors will go on a walking club. Um, typically, it's around Old Town. We talked about lunch and learn. And then every year annually, this is more of a special event, but um, we partner with Steve Baker and the Live Oak Cemetery and we do a cemetery walk and talk. So um, the seniors get to learn the residents over at Live Oak. We get to learn about the history of Monrovia, um, really fun event. Um, we weren't able to hold it last year, but we're looking forward to do it this year. And um, these are just the staff that help um, with the seniors. So you'll see them a lot more in the program. So Juan Cruz, he's our recreation specialist. Um, that's his contact number. And then Tiffany Peterson's our recreation supervisor. Um, but if you ever need anything, um, I'm at the community center as well. You could always contact me. Um, but that is just a brief snapshot of the senior services. I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. That was awesome. Yeah, no problem. You guys have so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, if there's any questions for Rebecca, please feel free to either submit them in the chat or feel free to raise your hand, whichever works for you. I don't see anybody raising their hand. And nothing in the chat. So I think you, oh. Great work, Rebecca, and community services from Edward Belden. Definitely. Well, Rebecca, I think you covered all the bases. Um, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for all that you and the rest of the community services department does. You guys literally do so much, so we really appreciate you and all your hard work. Thank you. So now with that, um, we'll go ahead and jump into our next speaker, which is um, John Tran. And he um, is here with us. I'm just gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen so that way you can see his introduction slide. All righty. So this is John Tran and he's from um, Prudential, which um, really offers a lot of information about life insurance. So he's gonna give us some more information for you all to learn about. So John, with that, I will go ahead and welcome you to speak and introduce yourself. Great, uh, thank you very much, Alex, uh, much appreciated. Uh, hi everyone, hope everyone's doing good on this uh, gloomy Saturday. Um, uh, like again, my name is John Tran and I currently work at uh, Prudential. I am a financial professional. Uh, but first, I, before I get started, I want to say uh, thank you. I feel it's honored to be here on, uh, on a Saturday with you guys having this quarterly event. I think it's great that the city of Monrovia sets up events like this on a regular basis uh, for residents of this beautiful city. Uh, actually, my wife and I bought a house over in Ballin Park back in 2018, so we're practically neighbors. Uh, when I was asked by one of my close friends who lives in Monrovia, she asked me to do a 15 minute presentation about life insurance because I recently just helped her uh, convert uh, one of her life insurances over from one company to another. So when she asked me to do a presentation, I was very excited because I do financial planning for a living. And when I started doing financial planning for a living, um, I didn't really feel that life insurance was a big factor. But eventually, um, as I started helping a lot of clients, it, it did play a big, a big role in their uh, retirement planning. So it just kind of came upon me, but I do get lost, asked a lot of questions about life insurance on a regular basis because a lot of people, my friends and my circle of friends do know that I do 
um, handle life insurance, but I also do handle investments as well. So if you have any questions regarding um, after my presentation, please do not hesitate to contact me uh, via email or through my mobile phone. Now, if you ever were to get a quote or ask um, or get any more information, there's no cost. So um, be, feel free to ask me whenever you like, okay? Now, a little information about me. If, um, if you don't mind, Alex, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Yes. Great. So I'll do a little presentation. My presentation doesn't have much pictures on it, but- um, No worries. Yeah, so let me go ahead. Okay, there you go. All right, so. Perfect. Okay, so you're gonna see it from there? Um, Cause I don't see it playing. Oh, there you go, okay, great. All right, so um, there's a picture of me right now. That's my professional picture. Um, I currently work at Prudential. Um, I've been at Prudential for, uh, for quite some time. I'll explain how many years I've been there, but we are currently located in two offices, one in Orange County and one in Los Angeles. Um, my, below is my contact information. If you ever need to contact me, have any questions, you have a, if maybe if you have a current life insurance policy and you want a, a review, be feel, free, feel free to contact me by email or by cell phone. Okay, now a little bit about me. Um, I already indicated that I currently live in Ballon Park. Um, I've been in bank industry for about 15 years. Um, previously, I was working at Chase as a private client banker uh, for six years. Now, a private client banker is basically a banker who helps clients that have over $250,000 in assets and um, in bank accounts. So I could be able to help them when it comes to investments or refinances, anything when it comes to retirement planning or financial planning. Now, I started at Prudential in 2017. Um, I'm not sure if many of you have heard about Prudential, but Prudential is very famous in the East Coast area. They've been in inception since 1875. So they've been through the recession and been through all the financial crisis that we have gone through for over a century. Um, now, when I first started at Prudential, I came with the intention of being a strictly a financial advisor, basically just handle investments, uh, 401ks, IRAs, and the sales of insurance actually just happened. So um, a lot of people just kept asking me about life insurance and eventually I started reading more about it. And then I realized Prudential does sell it. And then I started um, offering to my clients and then it started, it started falling from there. Now, um, I know life insurance is, is a little boring to talk about. Um, and the reason why not many people like to talk about life insurance is because one, nobody likes to talk about death. It's like, um, you know, it's a very touchy subject. Uh, a lot of people do not like to talk about their health concerns as if any, such as if they had cancer or, or they're diabetic or just recently had a stroke. Uh, another uh, myth that a lot of people think is that it's too expensive which is not, I mean, we are, uh, Prudential is definitely a, a very affordable and I'll explain to more about how we're a broker dealer later on. Um, a lot, uh, some people think that we have, there's too many options out there, there's too many companies, they're not sure exactly which one, they don't know which one they should trust and they don't know, they don't wanna get basically ripped off. So that's one other, another thing. Um, so uh, many people, I'm sure many of you who are currently working have it with your current employer, which I'll kind of go over that with you, the pros and cons regarding that as well. And last but not least, a lot of people don't like to talk about life insurance because there are a lot of pushy agents out there that just like to just knock on doors and just kind of like pushing your face regarding uh, life insurance. I'm not that type of agent. If you get to know me, I'm just a person who just, you're the one who contacts me and I give you information and then basically everything, the ball's on your court from there. All right. And a lot of people ask why I get life insurance? Well, uh, a lot of people should get life insurance because it helps maintain your family's lifestyles and goals. Um, it can help actually help reduce estate taxes for you and your beneficiaries. And if you do have a spouse, it'll give your, your surviving spouse or under, other dependents income upon your demise. And a lot, some people don't know this, but a death payment on your life insurance policy are, is, is generally tax-free. So if you'd be able to pass it down to your beneficiaries and not have to worry about them having uh, collections coming after them. And uh, last but not least, it, the, the younger you get your life insurance, and the healthier you are, so therefore you get a, a low, lower affordable rates right here. Now, there are major events that a lot of people do get life insurance. And one, um, a few of them I have listed here. One of them is if you just got married, you wanna make sure that your spouse is protected in case you pass away. Second would be in case you purchase a home, you wanna make sure that if you do pass, if you happen to pass away, you wanna make sure that your mortgage is still being paid and your, your family still has a roof to live under. Um, also, last uh, third one would be starting a family. If you have kids and then you want to make sure that they're well taken care of, that in case you do pass away, you want to make sure that they can still go to college or still be able to just uh, live the same lifestyle as they live that they've been living. Um, another major eye opener is that if someone passes away, like a, you know, you're one of your death or your dependents, you realize how 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 
how critical it's been that they that when they're around that you thought about maybe getting life insurance just in case you happen to pass away. And um, to kind of piggyback on that is also funeral expenses as well. Um, people do, don't realize until someone passes away that funeral expenses are pretty expensive. It costs around an average of $50,000. So that kind of wipes out their savings. But getting life insurance can actually be able to help you with that with um, at least 10% of the cost um, that you have to front out. Um, also, a lot of people uh, would get life insurance because then they realize that if they're no longer employed, with their current company, their life insurance eventually kind of goes away. So they don't have any life insurance from a third party. So they end up just looking for one. But at that time, when they do look for one, they're already at an older age. So they might not be getting the best rates, but also their health is not exactly as good as it was a few years back. Now, the nits and grits. Uh, so basically, there's two different types of insurance plans, um, life insurance plans that I like to go over. And it's just kind of the little 101. And it's a better way for me to explain to uh, clients or prospects in, in my own words. So the first thing I like to go over with is the term. And the term is basically on what you see on your left side of your screen. Uh, the term has many options. They have a 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, 35 and 40 years, as a matter of fact. And a lot of people, um, basically, the term is like, I would say like car insurance. It, you you have you you buy the, uh, the insurance for this certain date, and if you don't pass away with this certain date, basically the the policy ends up uh, closing out, and it, there's no payout. So basically, it's like car insurance. If you don't get into an accident, there's no need to contact the insurance company, no need to file any claim. Um, but the term is very very um, affordable. It's actually almost close, close to a dollar a day, depending on your age and and whatnot. But it's mainly used for short term debt. If you have like uh, you know student loans or bills or mortgage, and also it's for income protection in case you happen to pa uh, pass away early, the money gets passed down to your your dependents and they can be able to maintain their same lifestyle. Now, like I said in the bottom, there is no guaranteed payout, so basically if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, but it is a very affordable. It just provides peace of mind for that short term for the next thirty five years, forty years, um, in case you happen to pass away early. Um, the other one I like to talk about is permanent life insurance. Now, with permanent life insurance, uh, we do have two different ones, whole life and universal life. I don't want to get into the full details of that because it does get a little complicated. If I do, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'll be more than happy to break it down for you. But today's presentation, I just want to kind of be a, uh, be a little more general. Now, with permanent li life insurance, it is a guaranteed payout, whether you pass away next week, next year, or even when you're at 110 years old. Um, it does have extra benefits, um, such as chronic illness or terminal illness. Those are the things I will explain more in, um, if I do happen to talk to you on one-on-one, -on -one, or if you could be able to just message me from there. Um, now, with permanent life insurance, it does create a legacy. So basically, whenever you pass away, you want to make sure you leave something behind for your family, your kids, your loved ones. Um, it does pay for funeral expenses so, because pretty much whenever you pass away, it does get paid out. It also pays for final expenses and, of course, income protection as well. Now, when it, a lot of people ask me, what's, it, uh, what's the price difference between a term and a permanent? It's basically almost close to uh, triple the price, maybe double the price, only because it's a guaranteed payout, whether uh, you pass away uh, very soon or uh, later down the line. Now, um, I like to go over options. Um, basically, a lot of people think... Um, uh, they do have uh, with their employer coverage. And I like to kind of just uh, give them a little eye opener that, yeah, great. It's, it's great having um, life insurance with your employer, just like I do as well uh, with Prudential. But it's, a lot of people don't know that it's not portable. So if you ever, if you end up leaving the company, um, it ends up getting, um, gets taken away. So a lot of people feel like they think that the life insurance carries with them. It does not. So, and if you do currently work with the company and you, um, let's say you don't, plan on leaving or you haven't left them, the rates actually do increase every five years. A lot of people um, don't know that. It just slowly comes out of your paycheck. So once you're at age 40, it, it, it increases a little bit right there. And then when you hit age 45, it also increases from there on. Um, I've done some little research. It increases about 10% on average, depending on the company. Um, but then that's where you'd be able to read about and ask, your, ask HR and ask them how much it would cost. But that's pretty much a lot of people don't know about that, that they think that um, that the insurance covers with them even after they pass away. And of course, they, a lot of people don't know about the rate increases. So that's what I want information I want to provide to you. <clears throat> and last but not least, a lot of people don't know that Prudential is actually a broker dealer, meaning that we don't just sell Prudential products. We actually sell a lot, um, a lot of other different companies, actually over 15 different companies. So if you're looking for a company that, that you really like or you heard about in the news or in uh, on a commercial, we do sell that. I mean, I'd be more than happy to provide you quotes 
uh, from like companies like Transamerica, AIG, Pacific Life, even New York Life. Uh, we always try to figure out what options we can uh, to say, to budget for our clients and um, basically just show them what we have. Now, um, another <clears throat> um, thing is that a lot of people do say they have a life insurance policy. They purchased back in like 2000 or in the 90s. That's great. Uh, life insurance is like a retirement vehicle. I, I feel like it's, it's, it's good to do a review every two years because uh, what life objectives is always changing consistently. So you wanna make sure that if you wanna see if you uh, to be able to get um, cheaper life insurance, a lot of people don't know that they can get that. Um, I'll explain later that I've um, converted a lot of people's life insurances over and they're paying half the price. Um, so if you bought life insurance back in the 90s, it was a little more expensive in the 90s because a lot of people were passing away with the whole AIDS pandemic and a lot of cancer and, and whatnot. But given today's modern medicine and modern technology, the, uh, people nowadays are living a lot longer and that's um, pre-COVID. So um, if, it, it's good to kind of get close and see if you'll be able to save some more money from there. Now, another good way to, another reason to have a, a review is because um, you wanna find out if you're underinsured, overinsured. So that's where we, we wanna make sure we give you the best rates as well. Now, um, when I sell life insurance, it's not just the new prospects. A lot of people tell me they have this current life insurance policy with like New York Life or AIG. And they wanna see if they could be able to offer something better. And more, more than likely, they, they, they do. we do offer a lot better, um, especially with not just Prudential, but with other companies as well. So if you do have a life insurance poly, policy, please uh, don't, don't hesitate, bring it up to me. And I'll be more than happy to run the numbers for you. I'm not biased on it. Um, just, I would provide you the numbers and everything else is on your court from there. Um, but yeah, there's no, it's no cost to review and it's also ultimately your decision to make. So if you do decide to get it, please don't hesitate to ask me. Um, the next page does have my contact information. I know that my PowerPoint slide didn't have pictures on it, but um, that's pretty much, um, my life insurance is a little boring right there, but a lot of people feel that it's a, it's a necessity when it comes to financial planning. And if you do have any questions or question, uh, comments or concerns, you can email me at this email right here, or you can call, um, contact me on this cell phone. Um, thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you um, for, for, uh, for having me. Um, it was great um, seeing this presentation and seeing everybody present. Um, um, yeah. yeah, thank you, Alex. Awesome, thank you so much, John. A You're lot welcome. of great information that was an eye-opener. I that's definitely something I need to start looking into. So it, it, and a lot of things that I didn't know. So thank you so much for your wealth of knowledge and, and being so willing to share that with all of us today. Um, and actually, I will go ahead and just ask if you don't mind, um, uh, let me share the screen. So then that way we can go ahead with okay. the rest of the meeting. You got it. OK, great. Perfect. Thank you so much. You got it. Um, and John, um, uh, if there's any questions that do pop up, um, thank you for giving your information. Um, for those who do have questions right now, this is the time to ask them. Um, again, please feel free to submit them in the chat or raise your hand. If I don't see any, then I guess, John, you covered it all. Um, looking at the chat and I don't see any questions. Submit. That's okay. If you guys ever do have any questions, I mean, yeah. something that pops up like today, next week, yeah. Please don't hesitate to contact Alex or myself. Right. Thank you so much. If anything, I'm probably going to be going contacting you. Okay, sounds good. I mean, I, I helped Stephanie earlier recently, and she always keeps thanking me every time. So um, <laughs> I'm here to help. That's awesome. It. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, John. Yeah. All right. So another great presentation that we just went through. Um, I will go ahead and proceed with the rest of the meeting. Um, so we'll go ahead and move forward. The next thing that we have is map leader announcements. So for our map leaders that have any updates or events that are maybe going on or ideas that you guys have and you wanna share, uh, please feel free to do that now. You could either submit them in the chat and we'll read them aloud or you could go ahead and raise your hand. And I don't see anything coming up in the chat. No raised hands. Going once, going twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have Edward. Okay. Uh, Justin, if you could let Edward unmute. Perfect. Edward, you could go ahead and, oh, there you go. Perfect. 
Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say hello and thanks again for putting on the presentation and just uh, let people know that I was, I am uh, running for city council. So just want to let the rest of the map leaders know that. Appreciate it. Thank you. All righty. Anybody else? Okay. Well, with that, I'll go ahead and move forward. So that way we can let you guys get out and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. So some birthdays, um, we have all of our map leaders birthdays on the screen. So happy birthday to you all. I hope you guys have as much cake as you want to relax, self care, all that do something you love or as our, our community development director likes to say, make good memories. Um, so happy birthday to you all. Alrighty, so we'll go ahead and move into raffle time. Um, I love the image that Jesse used here because who isn't excited about a raffle? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stop sharing for just one minute and pull up our, actually right here, I'm going to, there we go. Okay, we have this fun little wheel. And we're going to spin it two times and see who the lucky winner is. Okay. Who is the winner? Oh. Oh. So we are happy to give you a Wendy's gift card. Um, FYI, they're going to be our sponsor for our upcoming 12th annual Map Neighborhood Conference. So thank you, Wendy's, and congratulations, Edward. So that'll be held on the side for you at the City Hall. The only catch is that you have to just come and pick it up. <laughs> um, so there we go. Let's go ahead and do it one more time. Christina Lavrada, that's actually one of our, one of our staff. So um, actually, is she signed on? No. Oh, okay, that was one of the catches. So we're gonna have to move on, sorry, Christina. Go ahead and do one more time. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so that's a little bit much. I'm last. <laughs> Ron, is Ron on? You won, and what you got was the gift card to Jersey Mike's. They're actually also going to be one of our sponsors at our event as well. So come on by to the city hall and pick it up. Feel free to give myself a call or any of the map team a call, and we'll be more than happy to walk it out to you. Yay! Yay! So congrats to you all. Um, and now I will go ahead and continue with the rest of the presentation. Okay, this is just the last bit. This is our contact information. So this is our city hall address, our phone number, and our email address. Please, we welcome everyone and anyone to reach out, even if you're resident, not resident, um, you want this information to share with anybody else, please feel free to reach out. Um, the more information or resources out there and shared, the better. Um, and then also really just really quick social media plug. Um, feel free to follow us on all of our little social media networks. Um, Jesse does an amazing job at sharing all the things that we have going on, um, both with MAP and other uh, agencies, local in Monrovia. Um, please feel free to join and you'll be informed on anything and everything. And then with that, I will just say thank you all for joining. Um, also, if you want to know any of our future events that are coming up, our email list is the best way to do that. We always send out frequent emails, just letting you know all the things that are going on in the city with MAP and uh, MAP related. But with that, have a wonderful Saturday.
enjoy the weekend and we will see you at our next uh, map ed quarterly meeting bye everyone bye, bye everyone